viewers and welcome to the Video Geek YouTube series where we discuss the latest education topics to increase your knowledge and enhance your skills. So talking about uh, our today's topic, we will resume our journey while discussing on today's topic which is basic switch introduction where the core topic which we will discuss today is to how to recover from the system crash basically i'll demonstrate all this stuff uh, in cisco packet tracer so let's start discussion on today's topic how switch starts to know about the hardware basically this topic will require to ensure that you know certain things to actually move to the core topic of the today's discussion which is how to actually recover from the system crash so in order to accomplish the thing the core topic you need to aware about how switch starts the booting uh, sequence of the switch basically it requires the knowledge of hardware so i assume that you have basic knowledge of hardware what is the cpu what is ram so ensuring uh, that you have a satisfiably no satisfiable knowledge to proceed with this topic so let's uh, get started so these are the five step or you can say sequence of step steps in which the switch goes through while booting up so first of all switch goes into power on self test program which is the first program which loads when we power on the switch which uh, checks the working of availability of a hardware and the flash file system basically flash file system is composed of cpu dram and a portion of a flash drive then the second step where bootloader program you might be aware about the bootloader which is the first program when our uh, any computer device when any computer device start up the bootloader is the first program which is initialized and load into main memory and then it uh, calls or you can say it grabs the operating system into the main memory then it's uh, hand over the all the control to the os so the bootloader loads up after the post te post test is uh, configured or you can say post test is over then when the bootloader is loaded it initializes the low level cpu which means the bootloader initializes the cpu registers so uh, when the bootloader uh, loads up the first task it does is the cpu initialization then after the fourth step flash file system so fourth step will include uh, initialization of flash file system which we have discussed that which includes cpu dram and a portion of a flash drive so after all these steps are over basically the post test then the bootloader and after the bootloader done the flash file system initialization it loads the ios which uh, which will now handle the all the operating of a switch so bootloader locates and loads the ios operating system into main memory and gives control to it so basically after all this initialization has been done the bootloader will loads the ios into the main memory and now the uh, the you can say the brain of switch is loads up so now all the control is in the operating system side so this is a sequence of step which is uh, you can say uh, aware uh, you need to be aware about so now let us move to the next topic which is basic switch configuration sorry we will not discuss the whole basic switch configuration will just uh, get you know about uh, how to connect with the switch and what are the different modes right so connection and port setup basically so generally the switch doesn't come with the inbuilt gui we need to have a pc to get connected with the switch and uh, we can have a gui on the on on our pc to get uh, to configure the switch right so we need to we need two things to get connected with the switch the first is the cable that you can see on the left hand side uh, which is the console cable uh, which is serial cable which comes with the rj45 connector on one side so basically this this section will uh, will goes into the switch 
basically the switch has a console port inbuilt in it so you can connect the console or you can connect this uh, rj45 connector to that port and this port will goes into the cpu so after this cable gets connected basically you need the uh, software for uh, terminal emulation right to get uh, the gui of uh, switch configuration uh, so in order to get uh, the co the command prompt or you can say the terminal to configure the switch we need a certain software uh, emulation tools right so which is the putty you you might be aware about if you have configured a switch or router then you might aware about the putty so these two things will be needed so let us demonstrate that how to connect these cables in cisco packet tracer so i have opened up the cisco packet tracer and took one switch 2960 and one pc for the demonstration purpose which match uh, which matches the actual real life scenario so assume that you have one pc and you need to connect this switch the with the console port that uh, i have just seen in order to get that console port you need to go under this connection and in the connection you can see the blue uh, blue cable over here which says the console as i have hover over here you can see it says console and there are different types of other cables also available but we'll we'll take console cable and now we'll connect the console cable pc to the rs232 port 232 port as you see over here and to the switch with the console cable as i have discussed so now in we, uh, we have connected the port now we need to open a putty if we have the real life scenario then we we have the putty software installed in our system but as this is a, a cisco packet tracer so there is no such putty on desktop over here but uh, we do have the terminal option over here if if uh, if we click over here if we just hover over here then you can see the message says that open the terminal emulation emulation application so you can change also the port configuration parameters but uh, for now uh, leave it as it is and click on ok so as you click ok you can see the whole switch console we have get we have got the we have got the switch console and now you can see we can go into the privilege execution mode by entering the enable command then then we can uh, go to the global configuration command and then we can change the host name to s1 so if we now close the terminal close the pc and now open up the switch cli you can see the same command entered over here so you don't get confused that this uh, this is some uh, another switch but that's the same switch which we have connected with the console cable right so that's how we can get connected to switch using the console cable so now i hope that uh, all of you have the enough knowledge the uh, the how switch starts and how to get connected with the switch switch in real life so now moving on to the core topic of today's discussion which is system crash so let's start so what are the reasons first of all of the system crash there are mainly three reasons of the system crash there may be due to faulty hardware maybe due to external maladies like dust and water and maybe due to fault in software the fault in hardware is rarely if we see the reason if we see as it as the faulty hardware as a reason then there is a very less chance of faulty hardware the mainly main main reason of the um, you can say the system crash which is fault in software or you can say you can consider the external maladies on the second number so there are uh, there are mainly this type of reason for system crash to occur now we will see how to recover from the system crash uh, which is we will see step by step in uh, cisco packet tracer so let's start so now first of all 
let's discuss a different modes in the switch which we can directly observe uh, from the prompt itself so you notice the prompt the first prompt uh, when I got was, was S1 greater than which was the user privileged mode which is the least privileged mode in the switch then I have entered the enable command to uh, move from user mode to privileged executable mode which is more privileged mode in terms of commands that we can get uh, access to privileged commands and we can differentiate user privilege mode and uh, the privilege executable mode with the prompt you can see the first it was S s1 greater than and now it was uh, s1 hashtag and we need we can also go to the global configuration mode and the prompt which change from s1 hashtag to s1 uh, config in brackets and ending with the hashtag and to move from privilege to global configuration mode we can enter command configure terminal so these are different modes of switch which we can directly differentiate from the prompt uh, by looking at the prompt right so now if we want to uh, recover from the crash right recover from the system crash so we need to actually uh, get connected with the bootloader actually the switch uh, the bootloader of the switch provides the command line argument or you can say command line terminal to uh, get connected with the bootloader or to execute the command which initiates the boot sequence so we can actually pause the boot sequence by doing which occur generally itself and we can fire our commands to boot the switch in order to do so if we are in the real scenario so let me just open this physical look of the switch so you can see the mode button over here I think it's not clearly visible but uh, you can see that uh, in the switch physical uh, you can you can always observe the mode button if uh, when the switch starts if you press the mode button continuously for 15 seconds then the uh, then the LED all LED will pop from green to amber that says the bootloader the boot process has been stopped or you can say the booting process has been uh, stopped from automatically occurring now uh, it's occurring manually and uh, as a result in the terminal which we get on over here in the PC right so the result will always pops up in the uh, prompt which is uh, which we can see on the screen over here so these were the sequence that uh, followed by the switch while booting up right you can see loading flash bin so the, this flash was the actual OS that was stored in the flash memory now there is some system crash so we need to actually manipulate this variable actually this is the some this is a global variable in actually this is not global variable this is a boot variable that is stored in the flash file system so we just need to change this variable from uh, the current one to the some new one or we need to check that the uh, uh, boot variable is this or something else so in order to manipulate this variable we need to get connected with the command prompt or you can say the command terminal which bootloader itself provides so get connected with the bootloader we need to uh, the cancel out the automatic process of the booting sequence and we need to handle it manually by uh, providing some commands so in, in order to do so what we can do and now let us put another switch and we can press mode button thrice two, two times or three times and you can see the prompt uh, over here mode button press for three seconds for ROM on access now you can see the message over here boot process terminate as i was saying that uh, we need to uh, terminate the actual or the automatic booting process and we need to do it manually as there is a system crash and the os is not loading the switch will not start 
so we need to actually end up the automatic boot process and we need to do it manually and as a result you can observe the terminal or you can see the prompt changing from switch colon or uh, I mean, and previously when it was successfully starting up it was sw a switch greater than or you can see or you can say s uh, switch and hashtag in the de uh, depending on the different modes so now first of all we will verify the set variable so you can always issue question mark command which will lead you the possible which will lead you leads you the output uh, the list of basically commands that you can fire right and now we will fire the set command which set or display the environment variables right so as you can see there is a no such environment variables available right now so uh, if you remember the booting process of the switch then when the bootloader loads up it initializes the low level uh, like register initialization then it initializes it initializes the flash memory so in order to initialize the flash memory we need to give command flash init which you can see initialize the flash file system so we give the flash init command so you can see uh, initializing the flash and all this stuff and uh, at the end done initializing the flash and now if we issue the set command then also there is no such system no such output that we are getting from issuing the set command so now we need to actually set the environment, environment variable from the older one to new one in order to do so we need to get the actual path where our os is stored to do so we need to list the files in the directory in the current directory in the flash system yeah so in order to do so you can see the dir command which lists the file in directories so we can we can issue the dir command and you can see the list of file system currently registered which is flash colon zero and if we give dir flash then you can see uh, there is one file named 2960 lens bark and at ending with the dot bin right there is only one file which is the os that we want to load so in order to uh, set this variable as the boot variable we need to give a command right so so the command is is equals to flash colon so you can see the boot command is used to load and boot executable image right but we'll set uh, the envelope variable by saying boot is equal to flash colon and the file name we can write it as it is dot one five zero hyphen two dot s e s e four dot bin and as you can see we have initialized the uh, environment environment variable or you can say the boot variable now in order to verify we need to we can again issue set command and you can see now we have initialized successfully the booting variable now we need to boot the system so all the initialization has been done and now we just need to issue boot command you can see it is loading up the ios it will take some time because it copies the whole image to the main memory and now as you can see all the task has been done uh, you can see smart init enable sizing and this all stuff and now we have got our ios running and now we can see the version of it over here and the image which is present and the prompt which we get usually when our system is working uh, properly
and there is no such system crash so following by following this uh, sequence of command that we have just followed the uh, which we, which we are going to repeat again the first uh, the first step is to mimic the gesture and so you need to go in the physical mode and then you need to press mode button uh, for 15 seconds for at least 15 seconds press and hold so you will prompt back with this uh, that uh, boot process has been terminated and you will get the boot command prompt so you can identify the boot command form prompt as uh, observing the switch and colon prompt over here then you can see the environment variable or you can see the booting variable by the issuing the set command if there is some changes so you can always set a new system variable or environment variable or you can set the boot variable using this command boot is equal to and then the path and in order to initialize the flash you need to give the command flash in it then after you can uh, you can explore the directories with the dir command and then you can have or your own variable set by this command that we have just issued after verifying by again giving up the set command you can boot the system by the boot command and if all the steps are, have been performed successfully then your system will start or boot successfully and you will get this uh, switch user privilege mode prompt which you can verify with uh, like uh, you seeing the prompt switch and great again so that's how you can recover from the crash thank you for watching this video we'll uh, meet in the next video till then keep exploring and keep learning